You're watching Cursed in Afghanistan. If you're a woman and you're in Afghanistan, you truly think, you truly believe that your lot is cursed, especially if you look at your own ilk in other parts of the country. Over the last three, four days with what we have seen, especially with the plight of the Afghan women, it's been terrifying. Women have taken to social media, women have taken to all, all kinds of platform to vent out their desperation making calls, telling whoever they knew across the world that they needed help to get out as they saw their country's fate change in the worst possible way. Their life, their liberty, their dignity once again snatched. <laughs> There was war. Bombs were being dropped. My father was killed there and a lot of my relatives were killed as well and we had to flee. I was responsible for my children and I didn't want them to be killed. So I came here with my elderly mother. She huddles with her three sons and a daughter in a makeshift shelter in a camp on the outskirts of mazar -e sharif her family is among the 3,30,000 Afghans displaced by war since the start of the year. This is a staggering statistic. 80% of those fleeing are women, children, babies among them. Um, it's, it's a dire situation and, and we're urging, and this is why it's so important that they, the situation needs uh, attention. Um, these people need support. Um, uh, the situation, it's, it's very fluid and volatile. Mariam is an Afghan widow in her late 20s. She was a mere child when the Taliban had last ruled over Afghanistan. As a child, she had known the draconian Taliban diktats against women and girls. They had no rights and no standing in the society then. Now the return of Taliban means Mariam's preteen eldest son is the head of the family. We want a normal life just like everyone else. I want my children to become something in Afghanistan, to become doctors, engineers or something. That is my hope. No one was allowed to go to the market without a male escort. For those who have a male escort, it is fine. But what happens when those who do not have a male escort, how can they carry on with their daily lives? They may not even have husbands. A lot of women have lost their young husbands. And now they are mostly in their 20s or maybe 25 years of age and have no one to look after them. How how will they survive? The majority of the Afghan women, they don't have uh, uh, like, you know, reliable source of income. Majority of them have some sort of work going on for them. And uh, some of them have lost their husbands in war, either in the army side or the Taliban side, and they work. So I'm not sure how is that going to help them. 35-year-old Nilofa used to be a school teacher. She now lives with her family in a camp for internally displaced people in a public park in Kabul. A couple of girls were inside a tuk-tuk, driving from their tuition centre to their home. On the way, they were stopped and lashed by the Taliban because they were wearing revealing sandals and they were told by them that you are wearing these to attract young men. During the last Taliban era, my mother took me out to buy me ice cream. I witnessed my mother getting lashed by the Taliban for revealing a face for a couple of minutes. I can never forget the feeling of helplessness in spite of being a little child then. Today again I feel that if Taliban come to power, we will return back to the same dark days. Constitutional gains that we had, even if they were not put in practice, we were able to uh, like, you know, uh, uh, use them. As for example, if you cannot vote in the rural areas, you could have voted in the city. Um, if you couldn't access the school 
schools in rural areas. You could have accessed them in the city. And these are some things that, that makes me worried. The right to work, like girls in banks, they are sent to home and uh, asked to send in their male uh, relatives instead of them to fill in for their positions, which is so wrong because you studied all your life and just in one day you lose your job, your livelihood, and then a, a male has to provide for you even if they are not related to you or they are just related to you by blood and they don't even care what you do. Afghan women, educated or not, working or housewife, all dread the imminent loss of their human status. Under the Taliban, they stop being considered a human being. While I see that we are on the verge of losing everything, I have really lost my hope and during these days, I'm just trying to get my friends together so that we can sit together and share our future plans so that if any of us make it alive from this situation, we can fulfill those plans. I even ask for forgiveness from some of my friends if I have ever done them wrong. Because of the Taliban come, none of us will survive. I have nothing else to say. I know we will get killed. I feel that we are like a bird who makes a nest for a living and spends all the time building it, but then suddenly and helplessly watch others destroy it, and then everything vanishes. I have a bad feeling. And it is the same feeling that other women have. In the 1970s, women comprised over 15% of Afghanistan's highest legislative body. By the early 1990s, 70% of school teachers, 50% of government workers and university students and 40% of all doctors in Kabul were women. And then the Frankenstein monster that the U.S. had helped create to fight the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan raised its head against all that was free, that was modern. All hopes of a democratic revival were dashed as the Taliban came out with a vengeance against everything Western, targeting women to carry out atrocities of the worst kind. And that, viewers, is feared once again this time. Burka or death, the choice is very real as both have returned to Afghanistan with a vengeance. The Taliban are back 20 years after they had been evicted from power and the Afghan women had revealed their faces to breathe in the air of freedom. In the 1990s, when the Taliban had been the masters of Afghanistan, there were strict rules that concerned anyone born a woman. The Taliban enforced their version of what they considered strict Sharia, or law, according to Islam. Taliban's assault on women began almost immediately after they took power. They closed the women's university and forced all women to quit their jobs. There were floggings and execution of women on the streets of Kabul that had been filmed. And when these visuals reached the audiences outside, it brought out the horrific reality of what being an Afghan woman meant under the Taliban. Everything was banned. Women were treated worse than livestock. <laughs> Girls in Afghanistan between 1996 and 2001 were banned from studying, banned from working, banned from leaving house without a male chaperone, banned from showing any skin in public, banned from health care, banned from politics, banned from speaking out to an audience. The punishment for breaking any of these rules was immediate and could be carried out by any Taliban official or fighter. Women were flogged on the spot if even an inch of her skin was seen. The same punishment if a girl was spotted trying to study and if a woman was accused of adultery, she would be stoned then and there. An accusation of crime was often enough to call for the harshest punishment. Amnesty International listed an incident where a young girl's finger was chopped off because she wore nail polish. Hello. 
After 1996, as Taliban clamped down on Afghanistan, very little news got out of the country that was being forced back to the Middle Ages. But reports did surface on how acts of violence against women exploded. Rape, abduction and forced marriage had become rampant. Those Afghan families who could send their girls to Pakistan or Iran to protect them. In the bigger towns, the Taliban ordered that all ground floor and first floor windows had to remain shut, so women of the house could not be seen from outside. In Kabul, there were a few women-only buses which they could take. The windows of these buses were all covered so that the women inside would not be seen. Under the Taliban, women disappeared in Afghanistan without rights, without freedom, without dignity and without hope. History stands testimony. It's been a tumultuous journey for women of Afghanistan. From being free, from being emaciated at par with men to being treated as cattle and then climbing back rock by rock. They have seen it all. Now, only to be pushed back 20 years of that very climb. Mahabuba Seraj has seen all the changes that Afghan women have gone through in the past five decades. Born of royal lineage, she left Afghanistan with her family in 1978. 26 years she spent in exile before returning to her birthplace, Kabul, to help her fellow Afghan women. Between the 1950s and the 70s, Afghan women were educated, wore Western dresses, was socially mobile. Very little changed in their status even in the 80s under the Russian occupation. But the 1990s onwards with the rise of Taliban, women in Afghanistan gradually started to disappear behind the parda and suffocating religious bands. We have carried the fight to the enemy. Americans' help to the Northern Alliance saw the Taliban evicted from power. And under US and NATO presence, a form of democracy was promoted for the next two decades. With the defeat of the Taliban, the door that had shut once began to open for women. The light of freedom and dignity began to touch lives. Girls began to take tentative steps towards the outside world. They were back in schools, at workplaces, and some even made their presence felt in politics. But now that the Taliban have once again occupied Kabul, the lot of women is in suspense. Overcoming fears of past atrocities, some bravely coming out in protest. Demanding representation in whatever be the new regime that takes charge of Afghanistan. The women of Afghanistan know that once again they and their country has been abandoned. And there is no option but to stand and face reality, howsoever it may be. I'm going to say to the whole world, shame on you. For, for what you did to Afghanistan. Why did you have to do what you did? And why are you doing this to this part of the world? I don't get it. I mean, are you, are you using all of us? Are we being just the pawns in your hands? Is that what it is? I don't understand it. But I really, really, you know, the fact that we don't have any hopes from you and the fact that I really, I don't even want to talk to you at all because the, the talking time is over. We talked to you, we demanded, we asked, we, we, we did everything and, 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 and nobody paid any attention. They just made decisions with their gut feelings or whatever. Um, all of these men of the world that they are in power and they are destroying what something that we worked so hard for. What is happening in Afghanistan today is going to put this country 200 years back again.